Hello, Michael here with part two of the RenderMan tutorial for light filters. So today we're going to be looking at the final three light filters that haven't been, yet been covered, uh, starting with the multiply filter, uh, the ramp filter, and then finally the rod light filter. So let's get straight into it with the malt uh, light filter. So as we already have seen, you need to select your light and uh, go up to the filters uh, button, right click, and then we're gonna select the Pixar Int Malt Light Filter. So it's intensity multiplier. And essentially what this does is, if I run an IPR now, you'll see that nothing's changed uh, from just how it was before. Um, however, it's essentially changing the intensity of the light, which in of itself isn't particularly useful. However, if you combine this with a light linking, so if we go to uh, Windows Relationship editors, light linking, and object centric, we can select sphere two, which is this one here. And uh, well actually let's select these plane and the sphere on the left and deselect the light filter on each of them. And then rerun that IPR. Now, when we adjust the light filter, you can see that the intensity is being changed on just one of them. And we can go above one, we could change it to two or 10. And as you do this, obviously global illumination will come into effect and you'll get more reflection off your objects that are receiving more light. But that's, um, that's really all there is to it. So if you're looking to highlight a object in a scene using the same light source, um, but you want it to be slightly more intense or slightly more illuminated than another light source, uh, another object that is nearby, this is a good way to do so. Next, let's have a look at the ramp light filter. So once again, selecting your light, right clicking and selecting ramp light filter. And you'll see you get this sphere thing surrounding your light. So when you've got it set to distance to light, it's essentially the distance from the light to the extremity of the sphere. You can move the sphere around, but it won't make any difference to the way that the light, uh, the filter is acting. That is all being controlled by the parameters. So to show you this, I'll go into the ramp and I'll create a couple of extra colors. So one thing to note is you need to keep a white color on either end of your ramp. Um, if you don't, it can act a bit weird. And um, if you're having issues selecting your colors, um, just click off your light ramp filter and then click back onto it and you should be able to select them. Sometimes it keeps defaulting to the left hand one. So let's add in a couple of colors. So we'll add a yellow there, we'll add a blue there, and then we'll make this go red. Ah, that one's blue. And this one's white. So if we run an IPR now, you'll see that nothing's changed. That's because the furthest away uh, light from, uh, the furthest away color from the light is red. So this isn't intersecting our geometry yet. So if we change our end distance to something like 20, you can see the sphere is getting larger and then that blue internal uh, sphere is getting a bit closer to our geometry so you can start to see how that's affecting it we can increase the size of our begin distance which will essentially make the sphere in the center further from the light source so you can see that the yellow is now starting to illuminate our geometry okay so i've just reset all the parameters to their default and i've just created a, a single red light in there a red color on the ramp and I'll just zoom in a bit so you can see what's happening in the viewport. So you see it's got the light filter begin point there and then it's got this red square that it's created. If I drop in another node there and change that to blue, you'll see that you've got a blue square there now and I can add in further more colors. So when you've got it set to linear, it's just in a linear direction from wherever the begin point is. So if I render that now, it won't actually look any different, uh, except for the fact that the yellow is the furthest color. However, if I rotate this, you can see that we've got these points. Uh, so, so you've got the red starting, uh, the blue, and then the yellow. You can increase your end distance to stretch these out, of course, and also you can control the distance in the ramp. Uh, so I've just reset that orientation. Let's move into spherical. So you'll see this looks very similar to distant to light, uh, distance to light. However, the difference is we can actually move this 
sphere around and whatever geometry into it intersects you can see in the viewport um, is how the light is going to act in the scene so if you're wanting to isolate some very specific geometry with some colors this is a good way to do so next we've got radial so the way that radial works is um, it's not dissimilar from spherical however it's projecting it rather than uh, rather than creating a sphere around so its height um, doesn't make a difference but its orientation will as you can see so this might be a slightly easier way to visualize a uh, spotlight sort of colored spotlight effect if that's what you're going for all right finally i was going to show you what the ramp did using the radial however it's not working for me at the moment i cannot figure out why um, essentially the ramp here controls the value of the light or color in that position so at this point here for instance if that was that part of the ramp it should be opaque and then next to it it should be uh, transparent so there'd be no light filter there however the effect is not working as it should be currently I've, I've, I've had it working previously so I'm not sure why it's not working for me right now but um, that's pretty self-explanatory anyway so hopefully that works for you if you are having the same problem and you figure out why or maybe I'm just interpreting this wrong in the documents but I'm pretty sure this is the way I've done it in the past uh, just let me know in the comments and I'll uh, fix this part up of the tutorial and um, finally we have got the rod light filter which is the same as the blocker but it's uh, slightly it's got a few more options so it's generally the better one to use uh, so once again select your light and then right click on block it uh, on uh, light filters and then go down to Pixar rod light filter and you get something that looks like this and if we run the render you'll see that nothing changes however if we move this light filter to intersect some geometry uh, before I do that I'm just going to increase the size of it a little bit on all axes and then if I move that down you can see that shadow is appearing and I'll just bring it in front a little bit so essentially any geometry that is being intersected by this filter will receive shadow or basically the light will be blocked. So you can change the shape of it by controlling the width and the height. That's all pretty straightforward. Let's make it just a bit bigger. And then you can tr control the overall size with the radius. So you can see that makes it quite a bit look bigger. And then you have an edge control, which is the softness of the edge or the fall off. So you can see that starts to get smoother and then you can go even smoother if you want. You get diminishing result, uh, returns after a point, but um, as you can see, being it visualized there, it makes it a little bit unwieldy. So probably around your low ranges are probably where you're going to stick most of the time. Uh, these are your overall scales. So as you can see, it's scaling the the size there however it's not scaling it in the viewport which is why i generally just use the rod shape to change the size uh, but if you need something quickly just on the width or the height or the depth and that's an easier way to do it refining shape is just um, what it sort of sounds like you can just change the shape of it in particular directions up down left right back front but you can also do the same thing for the edges whereas which is where this sort of gets cool so the right edge is this edge of the front so if we sorry if we increase the edge to say 20 you see it starts to get that fall off because of um, it's the same function as using the edge up here it creates a blurring effect to the to the edge um, and then you can do that for all edges if you wish etc etc so you can get some pretty cool shapes like that uh, density um, is the same as it was in the fil other filters just controlling the opacity of it essentially um, and all of those and all the other parameters work the same so that's pretty much all there is to filters if you've got any questions as per usual leave them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them as I can um, and yeah just um, have a play around with all the different filters try try see what you can create with them they're very useful they can be very useful in complex uh, complexly lit scenes in which you need to highlight and and push back specific pieces of geometry um, you'll probably find these very useful 
If you liked the video, make sure you click the like button on YouTube so other people can find it. And if you haven't already, make sure you're subscribed as I'm bringing out a couple of tutorials every week for all sorts of CG stuff if that's what you're into. If you want to stay up to date, make sure you are following on Facebook, link in the description. That's it for now though. Thank you very much for watching and happy rendering.